everyone. Thank you, Virginie. It's a real pleasure to have you on stage for this Adopt AI uh, Summit. Maybe to start the discussion, can you tell us who is Servier and what are your strategic ambitions by 2030? Hello, Justine. Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to be with you today to talk to you about what we do uh, in terms of AI adoption at, at Servier. So first, um, maybe a few things about uh, Servier. Um, what we have to know about us is that we are a mid-sized pharma company, so it's more or less 5.3 billion euro revenue. We are second player in France, but we are a global player. So we are distributed in 150 countries. We have 22,000 employees worldwide. So uh, we are 32 uh, ranked uh, globally. So um, we historically are a leader in chronic diseases like cardiovascular, diabetes, venous disease. But six years ago, we decided a bold strategic move. And we decided to become a focus and innovative player on oncology and more specifically, rare diseases. So we want to find new treatments for patients suffering from rare, hard to treat diseases. And to do so, we invest 20% of our revenue in R&D every year. Because the most important thing to know about us is that we are governed by a foundation, so we have a long-term vision, and we are dedicated to therapeutic progress to serve patient needs. So obviously, we have um, diverse uh, business objective in our two areas of actions. On our core business, um, we want to improve efficiency and optimize costs to fuel the, the growth, to generate cash, to finance the research. And on the new area in uh, oncology and rare disease, so today it's oncology, but tomorrow it will be neuro, we want to accelerate innovation because innovation is a race, so we need to go faster. So those are our two uh, business objectives. Very, uh, very clear. Given your context, what are your main challenges? What are the challenges that you need to tackle? And also, why AI is a game changer for the pharmaceutical industry? Well, I would like to say that like any industry that produces goods and distributes them all around the globe, we have a lot of opportunities with AI in terms of manufacturing, supply, distribution, promotion, marketing. But the most important things for us and where we want to develop Game Changer is within the R&D. As I said uh, to you earlier, um, R&D is a core uh, business, the core system of pharma company, and, and we really want to help the scientists to win the race we've started. So something that you might not know, because uh, we have a public from a various industry, is that Finding a new drug is extremely difficult, extremely difficult. And we have two major challenges in R&D. The first one is a probability of success, which is below 5%. And in rare diseases, in oncology, it's more like 2 to 3%. So it means that we fail more than 95% of the time. That's incredibly difficult. And the second challenge we have in R&D is the time to market. From the very early phase of research to the launch of a product on the market and the market authorization, it's between 10 to 15 years. And as I told you, we want to find new treatments for patients suffering for, from rare diseases, very severe, with no or poor treatment. So it's a race. And we do believe that AI can maybe help us to gain one or two years, and it can make a lot of difference for the patient. This seems to be very uh, promising. However, we still have very few field insights, you know, on how AI can transform the industry. May you share with us and uh, with uh, our uh, audience concrete example from your realization so far? Okay. Um, like I said, we have many opportunities, but I really want to deep dive on R&D processes, uh, because in terms of uh, data uh, resources, we invest half of our resources 
for R&D and half for the, all the other uh, um, functions. So please stay with me. I will uh, drive you through the R&D in pharmaco process, which is not that simple. So the, the first phase of the process is uh, what we call target discovery. So I would call it um, know the enemy or find the villain. You know, we are um, targeting a rare disease. They are mainly unknown. So many times we know the patients, we know they are suffering, but we don't know what create the disease, what is the root cause, what is the, the protein or the gene that we have to target to fight the disease. So the first thing, and it's all the more important when we are in rare disease, is disease understanding and finding the enemy. So what we've done is that we've developed a knowledge graph that uh, find links between uh, proteins, genes, diseases, and thanks to that knowledge graph, we've already identified three potential novel targets to find the diseases. So the really first phase is really to, to find what is going wrong in, in your body to be able to fight it. Thank you uh, very much for this analogy that uh, help uh, everyone understand how research uh, works. If we continue uh, this analogy, now that you have found the villain, how do you fight against it? Well, like in any fight, you need a weapon. So in, in pharma company, the weapon is a drug. We can have various modalities, it can be antibodies, molecules, and at Servier, we are a lot into molecules. And once again, extremely difficult. Um, the chemical space is basically infinite. So once you have your therapeutic target, the villain that you want to fight, you need to find the right molecules, but it's like finding a needle in a haystack. Very, very difficult. So we don't do magics. We haven't found a magic formula in an AI system that gives you the right molecules from scratch. But what we did is um, trying to reduce the field of research for the scientist. So we build a machine learning algorithm that can predict molecular property. So we can identify the best molecule that can be candidates to be a, a drug with the, the best uh, activity, selectivity, safety profile. And we want a researcher to focus on a narrower area, but it's still thousands and thousands of molecules to screen, but we want them to go, to go faster and to help them. But that's not enough. If I follow the analogy, you have now your villain, you have your weapon, but you have to know what kind of firepower you need to fight the villain. So for us, it's the dosage. You may think that, you know, the, the size of the bullets that you need. Obviously, when you increase the dosage, you increase efficacy, but you might also increase side effects. So it's a really an equilibrium that we want to, uh, to achieve. And, and we have built also a machine learning algorithm that helps the scientists to predict the right human active dose from going from the labs to human. So this is very important. So that's what we try to do. Very, uh, very clear. So uh, you have the villain, you have the weapon, you have the power also. Um, but from uh, what I have understood, the longest phase in the end is clinical trials that can last from uh, five to, to 10 years. Um, how AI can help you to reduce these uh, very long cycles? Yeah, obviously in pharma company, the clinical trials is when you go to human, it's a very long phase. So what we try to do is accelerate the time to market. So we have a lot of ideas on that, but what we've done so far, um, for instance, is accelerating the data collection and analysis. Uh, for instance, I told you that we wanted to go in neurology. We've uh, built an image platform that can analyze brain MRI uh, of patients to see if the drug is uh, effective with a, a precision that a human eye cannot do. So we can accumulate a faster more data to, to adapt the treatment and, and, uh, and the protocol of the clinical trial. So this is one thing that we can do and it can be reused on brain tumors and, and, and so on. Um, we've also worked um, on medical writing. In, in, in pharma, we have a lot of paperwork to do. When you want to launch a clinical trial, you have to explain 
the protocol, what you want to do, why you are targeting such disease, uh, why you think that your molecules can be a good drug candidate, and so on. And you have to explain it to authorities, to clinicians, to patients. And as I said, we are a global company, so we have to explain it in various languages. So it's thousands of thousands of pages to redact. So we've made a proof of concept with a large language model to help uh, clinicians to to do the medical writing and, and to gain in, in, in productivity. So this is also uh, very, uh, very promising. So as you see, um, in each step of the R&D value chain, um, AI can bring value in terms of probability of success increase or reduction of time to market. And we are trying to use every type of technology the best adapted to our dear colleagues from R&D needs. Very clear. You arrived at Servier four years ago, so all these realizations are quite impressive. How do you measure your progress, your advancements? And now that you have already realized all of that, how do you envision the, the future? First thing to, do, to know is that um, we do not think that AI will replace scientists, but we do want scientists augmented with AI. So. Um, We've uh, gone through a first phases where we um, build up the capabilities and had challenges about talent attraction and retention, and also working on cultural differences, uh, because uh, between uh, R&D scientists that work on a 10-year project and you know, a data geek that has uh, the habit to work on a two to three weeks uh, sprints, it can be a cultural shock at the beginning. But we've gone through that. And now, uh, I think we really achieved to work shoulder to shoulder uh, with our R&D colleagues. And um, we want to scale. So uh, once again, we are in a race. We want to find new treatments for the patients suffering from very severe diseases who have no or very poor treatment at date. So we want to accelerate. Now we have built the enablers. We have the right ways of working. We have attracted talents. We will um, go from an opportunistic approach to a systemic approach. So what we've done is that we've worked with our colleagues from R&D to identify all the pain points that they have all the, along the R&D value chain. I've simplified a, a lot the R&D value chain. Actually, we have 16 critical pain points, um, critical points in R&D, and we try at each step to see where AI can make a difference. So we've identified um, 40 high-value use cases, and we've selected 18 for the next two to three years. And we've launched a similar approach for uh, other functions, uh, promotion, finance, manufacturing, supply. And uh, in this case, we have identified 96 use cases of high interest. And we've prioritized 20 for the next two to three years. So once again, it doesn't depend on, on the volume, initial volume, but we dedicate half of our efforts on R&D and half of our efforts for all the other functions. And we will deliver those use cases during the two, three coming years with significantly increased resources. Can't give you figures, but it will be more than three to four times the resources that we have today. So if I have like a few seconds to, to take a last analogy, um, once again, we are governed by a foundation. We have a vocation, which is finding new treatments for the patients. So, and we decided to go to rare, hard to treat diseases. So if I take an, a, a hiking analogy, not only we've, we've um, decided to climb the Everest, but we are going to the North Face. So we don't want to go there we are without the best tools, the best equipments. And what we do with my teams is try to provide all survey employees, and in particular our R&D colleagues, colleagues uh, the best tools, the best equipment, so that we can climb this Everest and find new treatments for the patients. Thank you. Thank you very much, Virginie. It was a real pleasure to do this interview with you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.